First of all, just give us an overview of what the surging prices mean for your business when you're actually trying to bring some competitive prices to the market. Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, so as you, as you, you know, pointed out, rising food price is a, a very big crisis for both consumers and players like Curly. You know, we always try to provide best quality at the best price. So, you know, what we have to do really is to get, you know, basics right, uh, to go all the way down to the end of the supply chain, make sure that we deal directly with the farmers as we used to do, and then make sure that we take out any of the inefficiencies that we have in the middle. So that's why we need to heavily invest in you know technology platform to make sure that inventory management is done efficiently last mile is run as smoothly as possible so you have to get the basics right and then rest of it you know you, you just need to leave it open to to the market i guess so what is the market telling you right now in terms of demand as you continue to see rising prices but of course the pandemic as well raging on Right. So I think at the end of the day, you know, there's always a, a upside pressure on the price itself and food, you know, at the end of the day also is the necessities for many consumers. We actually see that consumer uh, trend is shifting away from the raw ingredients to more of a ready to eat and ready to cook. And these ready to eat and ready to cook products are less impacted by the immediate food price increases. So we are trying to see how overall food price increase has impact on these secondary products and to make sure that you know we, we get this areas right uh, so that consumers can enjoy food at a better price. Sophie, what's your IPO timeline and what would you do with those proceeds? Right, so uh, in terms of the IPO timeline, we are carefully monitoring the market situation. I mean, we, as a company, of course, you would like to tap the market at the most optimal time. So we wanna make sure that, you know, when we actually go to the market, you know, market is there for us. Uh, in terms of the proceeds, you know, we'll be continuing to invest heavily on our technology and then also the logistics platform, which is necessary to provide good services to grocery shoppers that come to Curly every day. Uh, do you have plans to expand to both non-grocery products and also what are your plans when it comes to expanding outside of the home market? Right, so uh, we actually have noticed that consumers prefer to do one-stop shopping for many of their needs uh, from a trusted retailer. And we're actually one of the most trusted online grocery platform. Uh, so, you know, our consumers have always asked for, you know, can we actually buy health supplements, necessities, uh, cosmetics, personal care items from Curly. So we introduced these items uh, over the last few years. And this business already accounts for over 20% of our total GMV. So we, you know, continue to focus on making sure that we provide more options to consumers um, in terms of the uh, outside of home market, we actually see a lot more of a headroom in terms of the growth in the home grocery market. I mean, this is the uh, you know largest retail segment in the third largest e-commerce market uh, in the world, only after China and the U.S. So we see still a lot of the potential coming in from the home market alone. So as for now, we'd like to focus on uh, making sure that we you know beat our potential in our home market. Sophie, when do you expect to be turn uh, to be profitable, and what would you expect operating profit margin to look like? Right. So, in terms of the profitability uh, on a uh, unit economic basis, in a lot of the mature markets that we are in today, for example, like core uh, Seoul metropolitan areas, we are already profitable. Uh, so that means that we've already pr uh, proven our business model, you know, that can be sustainable. In the long run, as more of our markets become more, more of a mature stage in terms of having enough of a market share, enough of a consumer, we think that we can achieve high single-digit operating profitability. And before we let you go, Sophie, of course, you're joining us on International Women's Day. We were speaking to a guest earlier from Human Rights Watch who was telling us about the challenges of gender equality in South Korea. Give us a sense of what female leadership of uh, female challenges look like in the startup scene in the country right now. 
Right. So, you know, as you pointed out, there's uh, not much of a representation from the female side on the startup scene. Only less than 20 percent of the total founders are females, which is substantially lower than the, you know, the, the total contribution that female does in the, in, in the population. So that number needs to be higher. And for that number to need to be higher, uh, you need a lot of support from society and especially uh, families, because many female founders have difficulties in coping with life and work together. So, you know, one way to, you know, encourage many female founders to achieve their dreams and to go out to, you know, achieve what they want is to make sure that we have enough of a support from both society and the family.